video number two for the skeleton doodles. I'm going to start with this one that says ossification. It's okay if you turn these all in in one big chunk. I'm just making the videos smaller so that I can actually upload them and they're not like a million minutes long. Get these out of the way first. Too many papers going on on this desk. Alrighty, so in this first box, we're going to list the different kinds of bone cells that we would find. First is osteocytes, which are the mature ones that you'd find inside of those rings. Their job is just to uh, maintain the bone. You have osteoblasts. And they're the ones who are building the matrix. Once the matrix kind of forms all around them, then they become an osteocyte. And we have a different group called osteoclasts, and they're actually a kind of white blood cell because they break down bone. Either when the bone is old or broken, or maybe if we need some calcium in our blood, then they'll break it down. So, maintaining, building, breaking. Okay. So now we're gonna look at, if we took just this chunk of growth plate and zoomed in on it. What we have here is, this is the most cartilage part, and down here is the most bone part. As we go down, we can see like this is the grown bone blah, 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 bone growth right down here. So we start in this first chunk. Whoop. Hang on a second, let me turn back on our lights. Okay, anyways. This first part is actually cartilage, which is made by chondrocytes. Chondrocytes make cartilage. And in this area, this is in the growth plate area. They're doing mitosis like crazy, making all kinds of new cartilage cells. Then they start to make matrix. And the matrix. surrounds those chondrocytes, and once chondrocytes get cut off, you can see them here getting cut off, they're on their individual holes, then they start to die because chondrocytes rely on uh, diffusion from the other tissues, and now they're cut off from those tissues, so. They start to uh, deteriorate and go away. Then our matrix is going to continue being made and it's going to start to calcify. Which means exactly what you think it would mean. It look, kind of looks like calcium calcifies. And our osteoblasts, which were the ones that are forming, they start showing up here. And lastly, the osteoclasts. So as the bone gets bigger, the osteoclasts, the ones that were breaking down bone, start to take away the insides to make the medullary cavity. And the osteoblasts make new bone on the outside. So the bone is getting bigger by adding more on the outside, but taking away on the inside. So, the osteoblasts form new bone, 
and the osteoclasts enlarge the medullary cavity. Next up, we're going to see bone healing, which goes with this because it's basically the same process. It really is. Let me pull this down here so you can get a look at it before I move it. Bone healing. Do this one and then chemical composition of bones, and then I'll stop this video. We'll do the joints one separate. All right, so you broke a bone. First thing that happens, blood's gonna enter it. There's blood vessels there anyway. You probably just broke a bunch of them. And in that blood, we have some white blood cells that are gonna come along. And they're going to remove dead cells that just died because you broke them when you broke the bone. But also any debris, like if there's any bone matrix chilling out in there that's not really needed in that spot, the white blood cells can come take it away. Up next, blood vessels start to grow into it. You can see them here growing in. As before, it was just liquid blood over here. Now the blood vessels are starting to repair themselves because they were here before and then they broke when you broke the bone. So now they're growing back in. And we form some cartilage. This cartilage is gonna help to hold it together. It's kind of like the scaffold that everything else is gonna get built on. Which is like literally the same thing as we just saw here. Same thing. So first, we get some spongy bone. Forms to replace that cartilage. And then, our spongy bone gradually gets turned back into compact bone where it should be. It stays spongy bone if it's supposed to be that way. For a little while, you might have kind of like a bubble there in the bone, but after you know, a few months or so, once it remodels itself, it'll go back to being how it was before, and you'd never even know it was broken. Let's have one last look at it, and then we'll go on to our last page for this video. This one says chemical composition. So we have organic and inorganic. Start with. Organic means the things that are not minerals. Then organic is minerals. So what kinds of things are in bone that are not minerals? That is collagen fibers. Why do we have collagen fibers in bone? What do they do for us? Well, they keep the bone a little bit flexible. So if it was just solid mineral, it would kind of be like a piece of chalk. You can break it pretty easy. If you don't have collagen fibers in your bone, then you have a disease that's called brittle bone disease or osteogenesis imperfecta, which you can Google if you'd like to know more. And what about the inorganic? So this is minerals and salts.
Results is a chemistry term. It just means pretty much anything with an ionic bond. So it doesn't mean like table salt. Uh, minerals like calcium, phosphorus, a bunch of them. Mostly calcium, but there's a lot of other ones too. And they add add strength and hardness to the bone. Now, on the bottom here, we need a certain amount of calcium in our blood. CA is calcium, by the way. But if we have too much calcium in our blood, then that can cause issues with nerves and muscles working. If we have too little, then it can also cause issues. So when we say homeostasis with calcium, I mean, what does our body do to keep the levels normal? So that way our nerves and muscles and everything else can work correctly. They have the right level of calcium. So going this way, we're gonna say, Calcium is too low. Then what happens is a hormone called called PTH gets released by your parathyroid gland. And it tells the osteoclasts, if we remember from that paper we just did a minute ago, the osteoclasts are the ones that break down bone. So it tells the osteoclasts break down some bone and give us some calcium. That causes the calcium level in your blood to rise because whatever you break down diffuses into your blood and then it goes back to normal. What about on the other side? What if your calcium levels are too high? When a different hormone called calcitronin gets released. This tells your bones to take in more calcium, it actually tells your osteoblasts to make more bone, make more matrix. Which takes in the calcium calcium level in your blood drops and now it's back to normal. It's actually super important because if we didn't have that again then we would have issues with our nerves and muscles. So this is part two is done. We're going to do a part three with the joints.